Hey there, everyone. Well, sorry we can't be together in person tonight. Um, I'm getting over a cold. I'm starting to feel better. But we have a couple other leaders who are battling colds right now, too. So um, we're just not allowed to hang out together when we are when we have any kind of cold or sickness right now. But, um, you know, we'll still, uh, we can still do our lesson tonight. Still learn more about um, looking after the, the money that God has put in our care. And we're going to continue to look at bargain shopping. So hopefully you guys are having as much fun as my children. You can see them. Bouncing away on the trampoline, their favorite thing to do. And it's beautiful weather out today. I hope all of you are taking advantage of the incredible weather we're having. To get outdoors, ride your bike, uh, go for a hike, do something. Um, to get some exercise and just enjoy this incredible weather. So... Thanks for joining tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. At the end of the lesson today, at the end of the video we're playing here on YouTube, um, we are going to have an Among Us party online. Uh, Rachel Valente is going to be one of the hosts, and we'll post that information in the comments here on YouTube and on the in the youth Instagram um, posting so that, so that you can jump in and we can j all play in the same rooms. So... Uh, yeah, we can still have some fun together online. All right. Hey guys, so as we're talking about like bargain shopping, I have to share one of my favorite purchases of all time. So I love garage sailing. I love the whole process as you get to barter and you can make people offers. And my wife's sometimes embarrassed because, you know, someone may want like $20 or something and I'll be like, you take five? And she's always like, no, no, that's, that's insulting. I'm like, they can say no. You know how many times I've had people say yes? It's worth asking. And if they say no and they counter offer with $10 or $15, well, okay. Still works for me. So I was at a garage sale and I remember there was a golf set and a bag with some clubs in it. And um, I think the person wanted 20 bucks. And I remember going through it and looking in the pockets and stuff. And, and I found a couple... There was some jingling. I'm like, oh, I think they even have some change in your suite. You know, like maybe it'd be maybe it'd be a dollar of change. That's cool. Um, and so I uh, I offered them ten bucks, and they said, yeah, okay. I was like, oh, that was easy. So I get this bag home, and I'm home with it. And here, let me show you. If I can flip this around. Here we go. <clears throat> this is the golf bag. And I open up this pocket right in here. And lo and behold, inside that pocket, I found $18 in money. $18 in change. So this is one of my favorite, favorite bargain purchases right here. Is my golf bag and clubs. Get another look at it here. That I still have. I made this purchase 15 years ago. And I made $8 off of it. So why don't you let us know in the comments or um, on Instagram. Let us know what your best purchase, your favorite bargain of all time was. So mine is, I'm still using it. Best, best deal of all time. So when you're negotiating, there's at least seven little things you can do. I call these the lucky seven basic steps of negotiating. Number one, when you're negotiating, always tell the truth. And not telling something that you know is also lying. The transmission really didn't slip when you just test drove this car I'm selling, but it has been slipping for the last three weeks. Whew. Wrong answer. You just got to look at them and go, look, this transmission's slipping a little bit. It's part of the deal. That's why I've got the car priced the way it is. You're probably going to have to do a little work on that. That's part of the process of always telling the truth. How many of you have ever heard the book by Tom Stanley, The Millionaire Next Door? Raise your hand. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, by the way, you ought to read it. It's the consummate study of millionaires. Tom Stanley was a marketing professor at Georgia State University, and he went all across America studying millionaires and the attributes of people that are millionaires. Now, I've established early and often, if you want to be rich people, you got to, you got to do rich people stuff. 
If you're, if you're broke and you want to be rich, do rich people stuff. If you're big and you want to be skinny, do skinny people stuff. Right? If, if your marriage isn't going good, find somebody who's been married 62 years, take them to coffee and learn about how to be married. You know, you, they're, they're, you find somebody that's winning at something and do what they're doing to be what they are. Does that make sense? Say yes. yes. Okay, now, what Tom Stanley did in his second book, his second book was called The Millionaire Mind. And in that book, what he did was he didn't study millionaires. He studied people that at least had $10 million. 10 millionaires. Deca millionaires. And at least had a $750,000 a year personal income and had maintained that over an extended period of time. Now, these are people that make $750,000 a year and have at least $10 million and have done this for many years, and he wanted to sit down and study them, and he studied the attributes, the character qualities of these super winners. By the way, statistically, they are in the top one quarter of 1% of Americans. A very rare animal indeed. And he studied how these rare animals work, how they think. And he, he came up with 38 character qualities or things that they had in their lives, and he ranked them according to most likely to be there every time. Number one was the thing that was there every time, all the way down to 38, which appeared the least number of times as he studied these people. I was real happy to see that, you know, you didn't have to be, have a 4.0 GPA to be there. It was, that was like, wasn't even in the top 10. Thank goodness I got a chance. <laughs> But the interesting thing to me was the number one characteristic of these very, very wealthy people, when he talked to their employees, when he talked to their vendors, when he talked to their, their family, their wife, their husband, their kids, when he talked to their in-laws, when he talked to their neighbors, when he talked to people who didn't even know them at, up close and personal but knew them by reputation, in every single case, not one exception of the people he studied, every single one of them, so this attribute became number one. These people had fanatical levels of integrity. Fanatical levels of integrity. Off the scale integrity. If you want to win in life, the truth is the best way. I know television doesn't tell us that, but it really, really is. So always tell the truth. 20 years old, Portland, Oregon calling. Hey, Dave, what's up in your world, man? I'm getting ready to buy a new laptop, and I can save 15% if I open a credit card account with the store. And I want to know what's wrong with saving some money if I close the account right away. Well, number one, you're going to hurt your credit score. Uh, opening up an account and then turning right around and closing it will damage your credit score. Not that I care a lot about credit scores. I really don't. The biggest problem you've got with this kind of thing is simply this. If you play with snakes, you will be bitten. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, Dave. I had a caller the other day uh, come to us with one of the big electronics store. They were a customer of the big electronics store. They went in there and they bought 90 days, same as cash. I got to use the money for free for three whole months. What's wrong with that, Dave? Kind of like your thing, right? And, uh, well, the problem is when you play with snakes, you'll be bitten. This big electronics store is known for putting a warranty on everything. My caller said, I don't want the warranty, but guess what the sales rep gets paid on? Yeah, they get paid commissions on the warranty. So guess what happened when they filled out the paperwork for the 90 days, same as cash? <gasps> oh, the salesperson accidentally checked the warranty box. Oh, forgot. Oh, darn. And when they paid it off in 90 days, they didn't really pay it off because they had a warranty they had to pay for, too. So it didn't work out the way he thought. Ended up getting back charged all the way through the thing for interest at a high rate. And got in a big fight with them over a warranty that he didn't really order because the salesperson was a twerp and so on. And, and so, you know, this is the kind of crap that happens when you play around trying to save $14 on something. Dude, you're talking about the price of a Happy Meal that you're saving here. It's ridiculous. No, 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 no. Do not sign up for a credit card to get a savings at the register. Now, I... Of course, going, going around the country, I've taught, you know, financial things for years. I'm on the radio in, in, my, in my city for over a, a, a couple of decades almost now. And one of the things I teach people, you probably know this if you've read anything I've written or anything else, is that I teach people don't buy extended warranties. Don't buy extended warranties. Extended warranties are a rip. So when you're going to buy a washer and dryer or a television or a stereo or whatever, and they want to put the warranty on there, that warranty is about 50 to 60% commission. Only 12% of it covers the actuarial statistical probability of the item breaking down. 
And so self-insure through that. Put that money in your pocket and use your emergency fund because, believe me, almost all of that is profit and marketing. It's a way for the salesman on the floor to make a little kick. And that's what it amounts to. So I've told people for years, don't buy extended warranties, don't buy extended warranties. I've not bought extended warranty in 20-something years. So my wife and I are shopping just the other day for a major appliance right in our own neighborhood. And we go down to this electronic store, this, this appliance store that we like, that we do business with, and I bought stuff there many times. And, and I walk in the door, and, and we're looking at the item, and we're talking about it, and finally we say, I, well, I want the open box special, you know, how you go through this whole thing. You got one with a little scratch on the side. And he comes back and says, well, I got one that's a last year's model. What's the difference? Almost nothing, and we want the last year's model. Well, it's not the color she wants. I don't care what the color is. It's, gonna, it's, not, you know, it's an appliance. We're not going to see it. And so we are going through this thing. We're getting ready to make a deal. And I said, look, here's the deal. I pay cash for things, and I want a bargain. And he says, well, I'll be back in just a minute. And he comes back in a few minutes. He says, well, I've got these coupons here, and, and um, they don't apply to this purchase, but if you're going to pay cash and you want a deal, you, you know, we're getting this, this last year's model open box thing, but we'll even let the coupons apply. And this was a several thousand dollar purchase, and it was a $250 coupon. I'm going, oh, you're generous. Keep it coming. <laughs> and he says, well, i got to talk to you about something else. He says, you need the extended warranty. <laughs> and I said, well, I, 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 I don't buy extended warranties, and I, I don't believe in them. I don't think they're a good buy, and we don't do that. And my wife says, well, honey, it might break down. And I said, where have you been? <laughs> you know, when I've taught about three or four other million other people not to buy them, where were you? You know, we don't buy extended warranty. She's just trying to be nice. She doesn't want to do conflict. The little guy's obviously hurt that we wouldn't buy his extended warranty. And, and he says, he goes on, man, well, you need to, you know, you need to cover. I said, well, is the thing going to break down? Is it a piece of trash? And he said, well, no, it's one of the best items made, Consumer Reports, so and so. I said, well, what do I need the extended warranty for? And he's like, well, well, well. He said, I tell you what, Dave Ramsey buys extended warranties. <laughs> I thought he knew who I was, and I thought he was kidding around. And I started grinning, and I said, no, Dave Ramsey doesn't buy extended warranties. He, Dave Ramsey, I can promise you, Dave Ramsey doesn't buy extended warranties. <laughs> well, now he gets all puffed up, and he takes an act. He, I start to realize this guy doesn't know who he's talking to. And he's like, yes, he does. He was in here the other day. He bought a television in this very store, and he put an extended warranty on it. My ears are now red. My head is starting to change colors all the way back. And my wife said, honey, you're red. <laughs> and I said, well, let me just try to explain this to you. I can promise you, I know Dave Ramsey personally. <laughs> he does not buy extended warranties. Oh, I can show you the paperwork. And so I just pulled my license out of my pocket and held it up in front of his face. And I said, he doesn't either. And he looked at it and he went, oh no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I said, well, yeah, you are. <laughs> and Sharon, he's like, well, we can get you a deal, Dave. I promise you. And I'm like, look, man, I'm sorry. I, I can't breathe right now. When people lie about me, it just, it just messes with me. I can't even breathe. And Sharon's like, well, we'll work this out. I said, we're not working nothing out, honey. I said, I, I'm going to say something I'm going to regret. And so what I have to do is right now is I have to quickly leave this store. And I held my breath and the, you know, and I, I didn't kill anybody and I didn't transfer it and yell at my wife. I, did, I was really proud of myself. And I just left the store and we went to another place and actually paid more because there was no way those people were getting my money. No way. I waited overnight. I called the next morning. I was calm and collected, and I was very gentle and nice, and the manager's like, oh, yeah, we heard what happened. Please don't talk about it on the radio. It's like, I said, Dude, this is the best story in the universe. It will be talked about. 
And I said, but he said, well, listen, we've sent out a memo to everybody in the entire chain. It will never be said again, I promise you. We looked up the file. He was wrong. We told him wrong, and it won't be ever done again. We promise, we promise, we promise, we promise, we promise. And I wasn't mean to him at all. I'm not a bully. And I just said, well, that's cool. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you. We will do business with you again since you've corrected this error, and we like you guys. And uh, he said, well, I, if you come back down here, I can get you a deal on that. And I said, no, we... We bought it somewhere else because I just couldn't stay there. I couldn't breathe at that moment. But integrity matters, doesn't it? Yes. When you lie, it costs you. That's real. There is no shortcut. That's the deal.